Hello everyone, my name is Rick and I'm here again um, recording one of our uh, podcasts around uh, Neo4j and graph databases in general. I'm here today um, uh, joined by uh, Yan Chui, um, who is a uh, developer at uh, one of our Neo4j users called GameSys. And uh, I'd like to um, ask uh, Yan, you know, would you mind introducing yourself uh, quickly to us? Sure. Um, hi. So, my, well, like Rick said, my name is Yen Chui and I work for a company called Gamesys. So, we are a company that's based in central London and we are one of the market leaders in the real money gaming business. Uh, my team focuses on slightly different you know, target audience. We, we, uh, we build uh, freemium model games for, uh, your, for more social audience, so people that play uh, Facebook games and uh, mobile games, for example. And I'm a backend developer there, so you know, I build backend for a number of our games in, uh, in, my, in my area already. Super, that's great. Um, so, Jan, I mean, th- these podcasts, we really want to talk about two questions, right? So, it's, uh, it's um, first of all, you know, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you use Neo4j and, and what do you like about it? You know, what do you think is cool about it? And then secondly, I'd like to, you know, sort of get your opinion on, you know, where is this, where is this going? Where will it be in five years from now? Right, so, so would you mind, you know, giving your perspective, you know, why, why do you use Neo4j? What do you like about it? What are, what are the cool things about graph databases? Sure. Uh, so for us, we have a game called Here Be, Here, Here Be Monsters, which is an MMORPG game. And the challenge that we have with that particular game is that we, in terms of the game design, there's a lot of data there, and it's very, it's highly connected. And from a, from a, from a understand, from a game design perspective, it's too much data for any one of our game designers to be able to understand and comprehend the level of, uh, uh, well, the level of impact that any particular change would have on the rest of a data set. So if you say, for example, if you change the price of a low level ingredient like water then you have knock-on effects for the rest of any, for anything that's made from water so if you don't adjust those knock-on effects you create you can potentially open up arbitrage opportunities within your game economy so that players can grind and make money without you know, doing anything you know doing anything interesting uh, so with Neo4j we're able to model the whole game as a graph and, and use uh, Cypher which I think is amazing and one of the you know, inter- one of the things that I really love about uh, about, about Neo4j we were able uh, to run all kinds of interesting queries and find out relationships that's not apparent uh, immediately. And uh, based on those information, we can then build a map model which allows us to, to, to automate the process of balancing our game in terms of its content as well as in terms of its economy. And in terms of the things that I love about Neo4j, well, I think graph databases are you know, super powerful. And unfortunately, they've been over, uh, well, underlooked uh, by a lot of people in, who are interested in the NoSQL space. But uh, in terms of the, your, the power it gives you or to, to, mod, to, mod, to, make, to model your domains, is by far the most powerful and complete solutions um, in the NoSQL space. Super, that's great. Uh, I think it's amazing that the work that you guys are doing around uh, Neo and you know the way you're using it to to model those games. I think it's uh, fantastic. Jan has actually done a bun- bunch of talks around that. Um, if you're ever uh, at a conference and you and you 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 look at the uh, you look at the agenda and find him his name, you should absolutely attend one of his talks. So yeah, final question. You know, wh- wh- where where do you think this is going? You know, where where are graph data- databases going? Where do you think you know it will use uh, in in the next couple of years? You know, uh, will it take off? Will it disappear into a niche? You know, what do you think is going to happen to these types of technologies? Um, I think in terms of the the, the modeling power it gives you, is uh, is pretty much there already. It's amazing. It's uh, more it's more powerful than anything else. Um, I, well, I've used. Uh, I think the next key development probably is going to be how do we then visualize those data? How do we build up tools to help us understand the data and the connections that we have in those all the sort of hidden information that we have in those data? So visualization tools and and well, visualization tools and analysis tools is going to be more and more important as more people start to use Neo4j to model their domain. And aside from that, um, I also think maybe, uh, well, it's from, from, uh, from Neo4j's perspective, ability to scale horizontally, that would be also another very important thing, uh, because right now for us, one of the, sort of concern, uh, one of the co- uh, uh, consideration is that, okay, we make sure that every stack of our, our uh, every, every component of our stack is horizontally scalable, and with Neo4j right now, even though you can do re replicas, you can do, you have asset as guarantees and all that, it's amazing, but horizontal scalability is only one, is the, the one thing that we're lacking right now. Yeah, I completely get that. And I think that's one of those things that is going to be evolving in the next couple of years. I mean, there's a, a team here in London that's actually uh, doing work around that. So stay tuned for that. Um, Jan, I want to really thank you for taking the opportunity to talk to us. It was great uh, having you here, and um, I look forward to uh, speaking to you again soon. Thanks, guys.
Thank you. It's nice talking to you too.